Hey, what's up guys, Matt with The Movement System. In this video, we're gonna talk about the four different types of plyometrics that you need to be doing. We're gonna go through examples and also talk about why you should be doing each of these four different types of plyometrics to give yourself the most comprehensive plyometric training routine. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Type number one is short ground contact time plyometrics. Now, these plyometrics typically involve ground contact time of less than 0.25 seconds, and a good example of this would be something like a band-assisted jump. What you can see in the band-assisted jump is it's a very quick, short ground contact time to make this very explosive. This type of training is very specific to improving the rate of force production and the force production that you're doing at max velocity. So for example, when we're sprinting, our foot is only in contact with the ground for about one tenth of a second. So doing some specific, really low load, very fast, short ground contact time plyometrics can specifically prepare you for these maximal speed type adaptations. That said, we don't wanna overdo it and only do really fast plyometrics because if we do, we're not gonna develop the power and the foundation that we need. And that's where we're gonna to get to the next type of plyometric. Number two is long ground contact time plyometrics. An example of this type of plyometric is something like a dumbbell loaded counter movement jump. We're typically gonna be on the ground for more than a quarter of a second for this movement because there's a bit more joint excursion as we go into at least a half squat and then back out of it. And there's more load that's gonna be carrying us into that squat so it's not quite as bouncy or quick as the short ground contact time plyometrics. That said, it's important to have a good balance of short ground contact and long ground contact time plyometrics in your training program. These longer ground contact time plyometrics are more specific to improving the acceleration phase or something like change of direction. When we're accelerating, we typically have our foot in contact with the ground for at least 0.2 seconds. And when we're changing direction, for example, like cutting or doing a 90 degree change of direction at a line, we're in contact with the ground for closer to half of a second. So things like heavier, longer ground contact time plyometrics translate more to improving change of direction with bigger joint excursions and longer ground contact time. So think about the plyometrics that you're doing. Are you doing enough that are short ground contact time? And are you doing enough that are longer ground contact time for those type of adaptations? In both the short and the long ground contact time plyometrics, we are going to be utilizing the stretch shortening cycle, but we will be training it slightly different. And with short ground contact times, we have more fast stretch shortening cycle activation, whereas with longer ground contact times, we have more of the slow stretch shortening cycle. The fast stretch shortening cycle with things like band assisted jumps, repeated pogo hops, short ground contact time single leg hops, and other exercises like that are very neuromuscular based, very quick. So those adaptations are a little bit more neurophysiological than longer ground contact time movements. Our longer ground contact time or slow stretch shortening cycle plyometrics, like the loaded depth jumps, medicine ball throws, and some depth jump variations, for example, they still train the energy storage and release component of the muscle, but they also rely a little bit more on the active component of actually generating muscle forces with slightly greater range of motion than the very short ground contact time movements. And then plyometric type number three, we have low load plyometrics. Often this can go hand in hand with short ground contact time, but not always. For example, a body weight squat jump is an exercise that has relatively low load of just the body weight, which makes it fairly specific to improving vertical jump. But there's different ways to apply that body weight. We could do short repeated hops, or we could do deeper full squat jumps. Either way, by using just body weight, we get specific adaptations to improving the movement that we're doing at body weight. This tends to be more of a priority as we get closer to the season, whereas off season, we may use more of the fourth type of plyometric, and that is high load plyometrics. So this could be something like a barbell counter movement jump or another heavy loaded plyometric exercise. Load does tend to slow us down and make this less of a plyometric and more of a power movement, but that's okay in different parts of the season. For example, doing heavy loaded plyometrics can be really good for building a foundation of strength and power that we can then reduce load gradually as we approach the season and wanna build more specific body weight type adaptations. So for a soccer player who wants to maximize their vertical jump to get to the most headers, for example, we might do more heavy loaded jumps a few months before the season and we might gradually reduce the load and get them to be more specific to doing body weight work as they approach the season. We also tend to see a bit more fatigue from using heavy load with plyometric movements. So that's also why we tend to do those a little bit more off season or early preseason, and then transition to a bit more explosive, powerful body weight type movements as we approach the season. 
Of course, you do want to keep in mind as well, though, the athlete's individual deficits. If you can, you want to program specifically to that. For example, if an athlete is more force deficient, meaning they're not that strong, you may do more on the side of loaded plyometrics, whereas an athlete who's really strong already may need more on the low load plyometric side of things because that's where their deficit is. So overall, there are some reasons that we might prioritize one of these types of plyometrics over the other, and sometimes that's based on phase of training, but it is also based on individual needs. So with that said, which of these four types of plyometric exercises do you think you need more of in your training routine? For example, are you not incorporating enough loaded plyometrics, or are you not doing enough that's short ground contact time? Let me know in the comments below, and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I will catch you in the next one.